What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training. And today we're going to be breaking down how slower wide receivers can still get some separation. So we're going to be talking about some of the key techniques that slower wide receivers need to be using. And then we're going to be showing some of the bad examples of slower wide receivers not getting any separation on routes and how you guys can clean up those bad habits and apply it to your game. So I hope this video helps you guys out. But also, fellas, if you guys have not heard, we are going to be traveling to nine different cities this offseason for two-day-long quarterback and wide receiver training camp. So we're really excited to get out to these nine different cities and states this offseason offseason. So we're coming to Tampa, Florida in less than one month. So if you guys are local to there, would love to have you guys out. We have about 18 spots left. Then we're going to Houston, Phoenix, Newark, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys want some more information on those camps, what we'll be covering at those camps, we're going to be doing one-on-ones, seven-on-seven positional work for two days, four hours each day. The camp will be split up into a youth section and a high school section. So you guys are working with guys your own age against live DBs and live competition. Check out that very very first link below. We would love to have you out at one of our camps. Let's get started with this video. So first things first that we got to understand as a slower as a slower wide receiver, DBs are going to be fast. No matter what level I'm going to be at, that the way they gauge speed is you have you have a fast wide receiver, then you have a fast DB, and a fast DB is always going to be faster than a, wide, a fast wide receiver. That's just how it works usually, right? And then you have guys who have crazy speed like Hill, you know, Marquise Goodwin, whatever. But the thing about being a slower wide receiver is you have to pay attention to the details, right? When a DB is playing you and a DB is guarding you, he's not going as fast as he can, right? He never really is. Unless we're selling fade, unless we're downfield about 10, 12 yards, 15 yards, we get him to open up his hips and run with me. But again, he's trying to get a read on you. So how we get separation is not about being the fastest guy in the room and being able to run past this guy. It's about the details of the route, okay? So now we're looking at this specific release right here from this receiver. Now again, one of the things I want to talk about is that uh, an average receiver, especially slower guys, they don't have the, the tightest change of direction. And that's what we're going to get into when I show these bad examples of routes. But we have to focus on the details of just basic route running. So anytime that I have a press situation right here, right? Maybe this DB's outside shade and I have to run an inside breaking route. This receiver, it's real tempting to just want to just run to the inside. But again, that could screw up spacing. You're not going to get a ton of space because that DB's going to be right on your hip. You're not selling a route. So what do you think you have to do? You have to work the best you can to restack or to get into this DB and give him that little like chicken wing and lean concept, right? So what this wide receiver does, he does a great job of restacking, getting back over the top to get that DB to commit to the fade. And this DB's faster than he is. He's a quicker guy. But this receiver is still able to get some separation, even with a weak break at the top of the route, simply by paying attention to the detail of restacking the defender. Restacking the defender is something that you always have to do. So again, that's not like the only thing that slower wide receivers have to do, but it's one of the many details that you need to focus on. The details of the movements, the details of route running is what will get you slower guys open and what will get you separation. So make sure, fellas, that we are always working to restack. I'm always working to understand the leverage of a DB, understand what moves will work against a specific type of coverage. If this DB, what are we doing if this DB's hip to hip with me? If he's running up here, I would give him a little lean with my off arm. I would really get into him when I make that cut. Hopefully I could get a yard or two of separation. Bigger, slower guys, you got to be able to get that yard of separation because again, you're a bigger target. The ball's going to be put on you. It's going to be put on your frame. You've got to make sure that we come up with it. And if we can get a yard of separation, that's wide open for us. Okay, let's watch the thing again, full speed. Now we'll get into some mistakes that wide receivers like to make who are a little bit on the slower side. Okay, so great job restacking by that receiver and getting as much separation as he needs okay so now yeah, this is DJ Moore. I don't know how fast this guy is. I just know that this is something that slow wide receivers cannot do. And we can't give any indicators and extra time for the DB to react on this route. So let's watch this full speed. So when he gets up to the top of this dig route, watch what he does at this pad level. He starts to raise up, starts to slow down. Now, this is not because the DB is faster than him. This DB did not win this route because he's just faster than the wide receiver. That's not what happens. That's hardly whatever happens. You know what I mean? So what we have to understand is, again, the details. We can, We cannot give this DB extra time to recover, especially when he has good recovery speed. If I can get him to flip his hips, right, like we do in this case, I get him running downfield. I should be going as hard as I can with no indicators. What do I mean by no indicators? I mean that you're in full stride. Your eyes are straightforward. Your pad level is selling fade. Everything about this needs to tell that DB that you're going deep. That's the only way that we get him to commit to the route. But as soon as I start to slow down, as soon as I start to raise my pad level up and expose my number like he does, starting to chop his feet, that DB's all over this thing. And again, even if I have a good Good break. Even if I violently drop my hips, even if I snap down, even if I, even if I get out of the break in one step, like everybody loves to say, 
That DB will still be all over this thing simply because we are giving away the route before I do it. I do not want to give up the route. I do not want to give away the route. I do not want to give any indication of what I'm doing when that DB is faster than me because he will break on the ball easily, right? He will break on that thing easily. That's not even a hard play for him when I give away the route. So make sure, fellas, if you were on the slower side, we cannot give away my route. I cannot give any indicators on the route. Everything has to be a fade until it's not simply because you're not going to get him with just your speed. If he's faster than you, that DB, I will get him with my body language and how well I sell the route and how much wasted motion I can eliminate. And wasted motion is this right here. The wasted motion of this thing, we don't need that. Raising my pad level up, that's wasted motion. Chopping your feet, that's wasted motion. We don't need it. Eliminate wasted motion. Be a salesman. That's how you get open as a slower guy. Let's watch the thing again, full speed. Make sure we understand that we cannot give away the route. Now we're going to get into one more mistake that wide receivers like to do that are on the slower side and maybe not the most explosive. And then we're going to be getting into um, a good example of it and what you guys should do and how you guys can build off of both of these techniques, okay? So now, this route here, it, I, I'm not a fan of this simply because just that break, we, we drifted, right? And so again, what do we talk about? We want to be able to sell the route, but we also want to be able to get rid of wasted motion. And that's why on the last one, I didn't just solely talk about, hey, you got you just if you sell the route, you're perfect, right? No, because a lot of guys can sell vertical, just a lot of guys don't have that violent, that explosive, that change of direction, right? Now again, if you're on the bigger side, slower side, I should say, this is still something you could develop even if you're not the fastest guy in the world. World. But what Mims does right here on this specific route is, again, he's selling fade. He's getting this DB to commit, but what does he do? When he makes that break, he does not make a sharp turn. So that's why it's so important that on change of direction, like let's say it's a comeback, for example, right? And let's say we got a DB who's running with me. That's why it's important at that comeback that I change direction quick and I get right in and out of that break in the least amount of time spent possible, but also I get low with my hips so I could turn the corner tight. Because if I got a DB right here and I'm running a comeback and I break right here, but I drift up field and then I get back down on that 45, that drift allows him to recover. You're rolling right into him. So same thing in this case right here. When this receiver breaks, imagine if he were to break this thing off right here and make a tight cut and he was able to get straight down this 30, maybe drift up to like the 31, but instead he drifts up close to about five yards. That allows that DB to undercut it, get more space to make a play on the ball. And then that's an impossible throw for that quarterback. So we got to make sure, fellas, as a slower guy, your change of direction has to be crisp. We have to eliminate any kind of wasted motion, any kind of wasted steps, any kind of wasted time at the top of the break to be able to get me separation. I cannot be that guy that doesn't sell the route, that raises up, that chops my feet, and be slow, and I can't be that guy who takes a weak break at the top of this thing, drifts off the route, wastes time, and be slow as well, or slower than the DB, I should say, because all these guys are obviously fast, and all these guys are obviously freak athletes, but if that DB's faster than me, it's the details, fellas. The details are what matter. The devil's in the details. Watch the thing again, full speed. So now we're going to get into this clip of Terry McLaurin, and again, probably not the slowest guy in the world but again he's going to be going up against I, I know him now he's not probably the most like blazing speed guy correct me if I'm wrong right but again as a receiver we're going to be going up against DBs who are faster than me bigger than me guys who are very disciplined in their technique and again it all ties into those details so he's going to be running 10 yard out very similar to the route that we just looked at so he's taking an inside release on this thing no indicators bam breaks this thing right off and it's not like Sherman is in a bad position and Sherman is one of the best of all time and he has great recovery speed on the ball you see how fast he's able to turn his hips and break off on this thing. But again, this is all we need, fellas, against a talented DB and against a, and if I have a quarterback who could put the ball on the money, that's all the space we need, you guys. We don't need a ton of space. We don't need 50 yards of space every single time. So when he gets up into this route, what does he have? He's got his head down. He's pumping his arms. Good pad level. Doesn't raise his pad level up. Everything's in stride. And then bam. Now I want you to see how tight of a change of direction. Pay attention to this yellow line. Look at how tight of a change of direction he is. He's right down on that 50. He snaps his thing off bam right on that 50 slipping underneath this db because he had that violent hip drop because he got low because he was sudden with his movement that's what gets you out of the route with least amount of wasted motion possible. And maybe he drifted even a little bit up on this route. Maybe he should have been a little bit shorter, maybe like a yard or two less. But again, he's not drifting into Sherman. He's not drifting up. He's making a tight change of direction. He's turning the corner tight. That's why it's important. That's why we stress having violent hips. That's why we stress getting low with my hips. And that's why we stress being sudden with my cuts when I'm going off a speed cut because that will help you slow down to change the corner tight. So as a slower guy, you've got to make sure that you're doing that. If you're slower than the DB, those details need to be on point. You need to sell vertical. You need to sell fade. You need to get his hips to turn. But I also need to eliminate time spent at the top of the route so he doesn't have space to recover or we give him extra time to recover. That's the number one way that slower wide receivers, everybody asks me this question, what if the DB's faster than me? What if he's faster than me? That's how. It's the details. You got to put emphasis on the details when you train. All you should be worried about is the details and how you guys can 
implement that to your actual game and actual routes while you're running them when the pads come on, okay? Let's watch this thing again full speed. Great job by McLaurin getting him to turn those hips by selling fade, making that tight change of direction, and then accelerating to that ball. Overall, great route. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, uh, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Always appreciate the feedback, you guys. It's always great to hear from you. And again, fellas, if you guys want to make it out to one of our nine camps this offseason, Tampa, Florida, Houston, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, Newark, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, and Los Angeles, California. We're really excited to get out to those states. I know a big portion of our audience are in those states. So um, we hope we can have you guys out there, okay? Again, spots are limited, only about 50 spots. I wouldn't even call it really a camp. It's more like a clinic because it's going to be a lot of small group work, a lot of positional one-on-one -on -one stuff. So again, very first link below. Hope you guys could check it out. I'll see you guys next time.